Let's meet our first guest tonight. He is the handsome star of Westworld, Dead to Me and Mrs. America, the charming, the talented. Mr. James Marsden is here on the show. There he is. Look at this guy. I'm going to give you a clap. Hang on, look. <laughs> look at that. How are you, James? Are you well? I'm great. You know, all things considered, that's the, uh, the, the unspoken all things considered, we always have to say, right? Um, I'm, I can't complain. I'm doing, I'm doing well. How are you? Well, you've had quite the year because you've moved to Austin, Texas. So you did that sort of, I think, just into the, when, I think when quarantine just started. Like, what, what made you want to move there? How is it? How's it going? Are you enjoying life there? I'm, I, I am enjoying it here. Um, I grew up in Oklahoma, close by, so I'm back in the region, and I've always yeah, I've visited Austin for the last 20 years of my life, um, always taking my kids down here. I've always wanted to get a ranch, build on some land, and, and now I'm kind of, this last year has made me realize that maybe now it's time for a little change, and hey, go do it. So I'm, you know, kind of diving in head first. Nothing's irreversible, so if it doesn't work out, I can always come back. I've been in LA for a long time, so but I've been enjoying it. Now you've you've had such a an incredible career to to this point. But it's so you've you've made so many interesting and brilliant choices. When you first got to Los Angeles, what were those first years in LA like for you? I loved it. I loved it. I, I like I said, I grew up in Oklahoma. I, you know, I was left when I was 19. My my parents supported me financially. They supported my decision to move to LA to be an actor for a year. If it didn't work out, if I wasn't able to support myself, they'd say come back and finish school. Um, I was I, I was it was it was awesome. It was thrilling. It was it, it wasn't scary to me. I, I enjoyed all of it. Um, I got really lucky early on. I got. Uh, uh, offered to be on day, on Days of Our Lives was one of my first things. I was offered to do mm. sign a three year contract on on Days of Our Lives. To which my manager at the time said, "We've got a lot of good inf uh, good feedback from other projects. Maybe don't do this right now." And this is you know I just came from mowing people's lawns in Oklahoma, so I'm like, why am I turning down a, a, a contract for three years? And, um, but it was basically like you know you don't want to get locked in yet. You want to keep your options open and and be smart. And sometimes saying no is you know, a better thing. There's been a few things I've said no to in the past that uh, I'm happy I said no to, and, and a few things that eh, maybe if I could redo, I'd do it over. Really? What have you passed on that you, that you wish you'd have done? Well, now that you say it, I'm blanking. Um, <laughs> uh, I, was, I was offered a role in Magic Mike. Um, oh, really? And I, yeah, I still, because I, it, well, it wasn't, I had the fear that I would be edited out of the movie and I would just, all my lines would be cut out and I would just be an extra running around in a, in a G string. So I think it was a lack of courage on my part. To act. But then I was like, what am I doing? This is, this is Soderbergh. You should have just done it. Um, but I have friends and family who still think that it was a wise idea for me not to do it because they don't want to see me like that. Uh, <laughs> but that was probably one that, you know, I could have probably jumped in and had fun with that. But, uh, more often than not, I'm happy. I, when I look back, I, I avoided some, uh, you know, some pitfalls. Now, we've got to congratulate you on your brilliant series, The Stand, which is obviously based on, on the very popular Stephen King novel. For anyone who doesn't know, tell, tell everyone who you play. Uh, so, yeah, The Stand is, I think, one of his masterpieces from the late 70s. Uh, I play Stu Redman, who's a, a guy from East Texas, um, small-town blue-collar worker who, for some reason, is immune to this virus that's wiping out 99.4% of the population within two weeks called Captain Trips. And uh, there's a handful of people who are for some reason uh, immune to the virus and they start to uh, congregate together in these camps, one in Boulder, one in Las Vegas. And Alexander Skarsgård plays uh, Randall Flagg and he's sort of the epitome of evil. And he comes to people in their dreams. And then Mother Abigail played by Whoopi Goldberg also comes to people in their dreams and it's this battle of good versus evil. So it's not, while it starts as a show about, or a book about a, you know, global pandemic, it's, it's more of a storytelling mechanism to tell the bigger story of good versus evil. Now you wrapped production in March last year, which was obviously yeah. just as shutdowns were starting from, from COVID. I mean, given the subject material, how paranoid were you when, you know, COVID started to just enter all of our lives? Right, yeah. Well, we were, yeah, we were shooting in Vancouver, and uh, you started to hear about it late December and then into January. We shot up until March and 
February, you'd start to see a mask or two on set and, you know, some hand sanitizer come out and then there were you know, stricter uh, measurements taken. But it was eerie. It was just strange having finished six months of doing a show about a pandemic and now this is actually, you know, happening. Uh, obviously in March is when it sort of went, you know, really, really heavy with the lockdowns and everything. But I was able to, we were able to wrap up and the 15th of March flew back to Los Angeles and, you know, go into lockdown immediately. So it was a strange, a strange, strange thing for sure. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's probably not the best timing, um, <laughs> but... Um, I think it is though, I do, because I think when yeah. you're watching a show like that, quite often you feel like, well, those, that's, those things aren't gonna happen. And I feel like it just, it roots it, it grounds it somehow. I really do. And yeah. I think you are fantastic in the show.